Hello friends, I have just finished a full day of writing. I am nearing the end of this revision of A Closet Full of Cauldrons. I have like a few more weeks to push and I'm so excited about it. And I'm also starting to prep for my 100k Q4 challenge. I'm staying in the mystery realm but I'm kind of transitioning to a bit more of a thriller which is going to be quite fun and I figured while I did that I would answer some questions. These are actually questions that y'all had submitted ages ago that just in general questions you wanted to ask other writers. So please do not hesitate to answer any of these questions that I do in the comments down below. Venice. This is bad girl behavior. Very bad. Miss Mayhem. All right, I'm gonna take you back to this morning, Kate. <laughs> I've got my Hank Green socks. Can't tell. A pair of my Hank Green socks. <laughs> oh, an ancient uh, <laughs> Doctor Who workout shirt covered in paint. And the first question that I thought was really interesting says, I see a lot of pantsers trying very hard to outline, so... I love a preamble to the question. Why do you try this hard to write a certain way when you're comfortable writing in a different way that suits you better? As someone who has become more of an outliner over time, I, I thought this was fascinating. Um, so let us start running and then we will get to answering. <laughs> I think part of the reason for this is that even though something is um, more natural to you, you hear so many other writers talking about how wonderful outlining is for them that you want to try, especially because what I found is that though the initial pantsing process is really easy, it was when I was in revision two, three, four that I really saw the um, how helpful it might have been to have an outline. Also, just because you're comfortable with something doesn't mean it's better in the long run. That's kind of what I had to learn. I was comfortable pantsing, uh, zero drafting, and I still do my zero draft. I still pants a little bit, but just not in the same way. I also think though that maybe outliners would benefit from trying to pants more to just kind of pushing themselves to not having everything so perfect at the beginning. It's just kind of one of those things where if you're finding part of the process later or earlier just really hard maybe trying something different could help also very much in a you don't know what you don't know kind of way but if you're never trying something new you don't know if that different process will work for you i agree that if you are not an outliner agonizing over an outline and really pushing yourself to do that when you won't use it and don't like it and it kills the creative process and the fun for you that's obviously not good but just switching it up occasionally trying something new i feel like that can only kind of expand your Options. Now this person asked, if you could spend a day writing anywhere in the world, where would it be? I think, something just flew by me, I think a screened in porch. <laughs> I think somewhere with no mosquitoes or bugs biting at me would be ideal. This is actually not too bad this time of year. And I think also because we have like a lot of diversity of plants uh, helps a lot with the mosquito population, but Ooh, you know where would be fun would be if I could like literally jump into my world like I'm jumping into a book. If I could portal fantasy into my own world that I'm building, that would be really cool to get to experience it. Might make describing some of it easier. Also just how fun would that be? I know we kind of do that with our own imagination, but if I could actually do that. Alternatively, in the real world, yeah, I think a morning writing session on a screened-in porch with a cup of tea, maybe some biscuits, ooh, that would be delightful. Maybe also somewhere I could then from there walk to like a local-owned cafe right there. Um, oh, maybe that's where I could get my cappuccino. <laughs> write a little bit there, kind of do some people watching, uh, go to a bookstore after that, walk home, and then yeah, maybe return to that screened in porch. I'm thinking somewhere in Maine, maybe, off the top of my head. Oh, Canada. <laughs> Very broad. All of Canada, really. <laughs>
<laughs> Are you being silly? <laughs> I had a story idea based off of like a little thing I'd heard on a podcast episode today, but obviously I don't I don't have time right now, so in the journal it goes. All right, I got my Twitch stream. Just about to start. Please ignore the still wet hair. I did see this question, which is what do you do when you're stuck on a scene? I skip it. I actually did that yesterday. Chapter 14, I went over it once, but it still just was not, quite doing the thing I needed it to do. I have all of these work through notes, so as I'd gone through it, I still had four or five that I needed to answer, and I was like, hmm. But for whatever reason, I just, I, I was I was struggling a little bit. I think because this chapter is where we're pulling some threads in together, um, and we're getting to see characters who haven't interacted before, and so it's just like, it needed a little bit of extra care and it was a step above what I mentally could do yesterday. So I went ahead and skipped to chapter 15 into the next scene, worked on that a little bit instead for the remaining part of my stream. Um, but now here we are today and I feel like I can complete it. So sometimes that's what you need. I'm very excited to change that little warning sign though. I don't love that, <laughs> but it is effective for me to be like, oh yes, I must get back to it and fix it. I should also say that I know for this scene, I'm able to skip over it because of my work through notes of the bullet points left. All of them are self-contained to the individual scene. I get that that can feel harder to skip a scene when um, it's your drafting potentially, or you don't know how it might affect the rest of the story. Like if you skip that, but something integral needs to happen there and you don't know exactly what, but then you move on as if it hasn't happened yet. It's just, it can be a bit of a mess. What I'll do when I am actually drafting uh, is I will just start doing bullet points for the scene and be like, this is what I intend to write. For some reason, actually writing it's not working today, but this is what I intend to write. And then I can move on as if I've written it because I've at least slightly moved my way through the scene. So it's not a complete skip. It's just like if the motivation wasn't there for that day, for that scene, I can skip it with the bullet points. That's my advice. If I'm stuck, I just skip. Let me know what you do. All right, it is time to go live. That was such a good stream. I swear the ebb and flow of creativity is so crazy because yesterday I had problems with chapter 14 and I did that first read through and then my brain just was like gobbledygook. And then today I got through 14, added everything I needed to, got through the rest of 15 and got through 16. So now I get to start on 17. I think I'm gonna bring my laptop on my trip with me. So if I could get I'm, I'm so close. I have chapter 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22 left. That's not that many. I'm so close. All right, let me give myself some credit. 15 is done, 16 is done. Ah. Now I am on draft three of A Closet Full of Cauldrons and I'm excited to send this out to beta readers after this, but I did get a question that asked, how do you make the editing process easier, especially if you've written a zero draft? So for that, I would actually like to take a trip to the library. I also have a stack of books to return. <laughs>
okay, I wasn't allowed to stop and look at any books at the library because I'm already gonna be gone for a week, so there's no reason to hold them. That's what I remind myself, even though all of these came out. I just saw this book recommended, Refuse to be Done. I think it was published 2020, 2022. How to write and rewrite a novel in three drafts. Okay, so the premise of this sounds so cool. It's got really good reviews, I thought, on Goodreads. The first draft is about forward progress, generative revision. Some of this sounds buzzwordy, but as I'm skimming through it, it's like segmented out, which is gonna be fun. Time narrated versus time of narration. Steer toward the rapids. The second draft is rewrite, don't revise. And the third draft is refuse to be done. This one, as I'm skimming, is talking about scene structure. It talked about diminished sensory verbs. Like, I think it's really going to get into the nitty gritty. It's quite a thin book too, so I'm excited. I will let you know if this makes a huge difference to me. As someone who's recently gotten better about, I think, picking the projects that I'm going to continue working on, revision is the thing that I'm getting more and more uh, practice with, which is wonderful. Um, but also, I, I, ooh, he mentions Ursula K. Le Guin already in it. Anyways, for making it out of the editing process uh, easier if you are zero drafting, I also still do my zero draft. Uh, even when I have an outline, I think I do kind of, there's like this outline zero draft stage depending on how long my outline is. I just love a zero draft. I just love discovering my story that way, but I do a complete rewrite as well. That next draft is a complete rewrite. I might have the story up just so I can see parts that I liked, but for the most part, I'm I, everything is being rewritten in that next draft. And from there, then it's like rereading things and seeing what works uh, big picture wise. So. I'm excited. If I could get this down to three drafts, that would be incredible. Honestly, that would save me two drafts, probably, I would say. All right, let's continue this eye break and get some groceries. So this next question I find so interesting because I I don't know that I've ever fully understood it. Uh, they asked, do you define books by what they mean to you? Like writing the book of your soul or your mind or your heart? I have heard writing advice where people are like, it's not sellable. So many books of the heart are not sellable, supposedly, supposedly. Or don't try to sell your soul book as book two on a contract or something. You need like a banger of a book concept on book two. And it's just, I, I think I infuse parts of me into every story and I could point to each story and tell you which part of me, which couple parts of me um, are in there and what I'm potentially like using my art to work through things or express thoughts I have on things that have, you know, take up a lot of space in my brain. But I honestly, I don't know if I've had, uh, this is my, the book of my heart. Um, and anyway, so I'm so fascinated by it because I feel like all of my books are books of my heart or none of them are, or I, I don't know. The only thing I could imagine is if I was telling quite literally my life story or something. Um, I've had books where the parts of me I'm infusing are very personal, but also they become so different within the context of the book that they don't they're now the characters, things that they're working through. I don't know, it's just really interesting. I would be fascinated to know what you think, what that means to y'all. What is the book of your heart or the book of your soul? Do you have one book that is like the book of your heart? I, I don't know, let me know. I'm so fascinated, I'm curious. I've seen it around a lot and just been like, I assumed it was just a lot of someone's life story in it and it was like, the most extremely personal thing, but I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All right, we're going to switch over with some more coffee next to Snorlax and get into some video editing. <laughs> I went to the bathroom for two seconds. <laughs> this is why I have to close my computer, sweet girl. Oh, you're precious. Thinking about this? 
Thank you. Okay, I'm currently halfway through this edit. On this video, I am realizing I think I'm gonna have to come back as editing Kate because I filmed the outro, but I like totally spaced on a few things I wanted to say. I need a bit of an eye break. I look like I'm haunting something. I like it. Anyways, I need a bit of an eye break. So I need to go and do some packing for my trip tomorrow, which I'm not packed. But while we're doing that, I figured we would answer another question. This person said that I always hit a point about 30 to 40K into the story where I start to feel lost. Do you experience this as well? What do you do to keep writing? So for me, this is actually about the 60% mark into a story, I would say. Kind of that point where you have to start tying up all of the loose ends, like not completely, not totally. There's still some loose ends. You're maybe still introducing some things, but there are elements that need to start sort of narrowing. Um, but we're still like at the, we're not yet at the peak of the drama. So it's just an interesting time for me is the 60% mark. And I experience this even when I've written a story that I've like super outlined. When I'm revising even that 60% mark, I just have to like really push past. It can be sort of hard to see the forest for the trees kind of vibe. But that's why I'm really excited to finish reading this book, How to Write a Mystery. It was fully edited by Lee Child with Lori R. King and it's How to Write a Mystery Handbook for Mystery Writers of America. And I even just in skimming it found this new way to outline, new to me sort of way of outlining, where you go from the beginning to the middle of the story and then from the end to the middle again. I'm hoping that'll help me when I hit the 60% mark that I won't feel quite so lost anymore. Working my way almost backwards to the midsection again. And I'm wondering maybe if that would help you too. 30 to 40k in could be about ish around the same part potentially. I do think this goes back to how I felt earlier where I will just skip scenes or completely bullet point scenes. To me the only way to keep going is through, like through the heart of the story when that happens and getting to a place where I feel more confident in things. It, it doesn't have to be perfect, you know? If you get lost 30 to 40k in but you feel like you still know maybe what would be the 60k mark, the 80k mark of your story, it's okay to write that chunk instead and come back to things. I think there's a flexibility needed when creating. It doesn't necessarily stop you from feeling a little lost but I do think that you then have guideposts for the gap that you need to bridge. And if you don't get it right in the first go, you always have the next draft too. Okay, I think I have my packing all done. I don't know if anyone else does it like this, but I segment things out by outfit. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> and then I throw in extras like, just in case. Someone asked, how much reading for pleasure do you do when drafting? I used to be much more intense with not reading anything in my genre when drafting, but I've loosened up on that a lot. I don't know if it's because I now try to work a little bit less on weekends, so I'm reading more. I am doing more audiobooks as I'm crocheting more, which I just started Gallant by V.E. Schwab. I put it on hold ages ago and it finally came in just in time for multiple plane rides, so perfect. I don't know if I read more now while drafting because I feel like I've found my voice, or if it's because I recognize more how much things will change as I revise stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is. I'm just not as rigid about it. I also think it's kind of fun sometimes uh, to read the genre that I'm writing. Also because sometimes I will enjoy a book but really hate how they did one thing and it'll inspire a whole new idea or subplot for me. I love that. <laughs> Sometimes it's a whole book because I'm like, I wish they would have done it this way. I think it's time to get some of these into the suitcase. And the distant warmth of sun. Hooray. Does this include my socks? No. Does this include my toiletries? No. Does this include the books I'm gonna read? Nope. 
packing is not done, but we are gonna pause this. The real question is, which book should I take on my trip? I picked up several from the library, so. Vin is in my chair. I do need to be in that chair soon though because I am going to crochet for a little bit. I have about an hour until my Patreon stream where we're gonna get to do prep timber stuff. I'm really excited because I just haven't had time to focus on prep timber. Um, the plus side is I think on the plane ride while I'm listening to books or while I'm listening to podcasts I will be able to write a whole bunch of stuff down but I'm excited for this stream it's really gonna help I do have some crochet to do so in the meantime let's do that you want to inspect <laughs> okay inspection done we're sharing now is this lopsided have we fallen? <laughs> Tools of the trade. Also, by the way, I still have my coffee from earlier that I've already reheated once. I have a tea I made that is now fully look lukewarm. Mm. Just cool. It's cool. <laughs> and I have my water, so really, <laughs> I am ready to get to crafting. Someone asked, what do you think is missing from AuthorTube? I'm not sure that I think anything's missing, but I do kind of feel like we're on the precipice of our next era if you will. Um, we've had kind of like our community events era where a bunch of people were making their own community events that were so freaking cool. Oh wow it's hard to talk and count at the same time. Okay that was five. <laughs> Before that I'd say we had like our writing experiment phase where uh you know, I, I mean that everyone started doing it, not like a it's ended kind of thing. Um, but I do think like they were popping up a lot more. Uh, I also think just before that it was like vlogs were the new thing. And uh, before that it was everyone was still doing tags and much more like chatty talking head video. We also had in between then some grifting, which is interesting to reflect on now. Um, there was also the time where I feel like all writing communities start with like a weird trad pub versus self pub thing. I hope that we're past that but I feel like the origins of every writing community has to go through that phase. But yeah I think we're due for a new one and I'm not entirely sure what I think it's gonna be but I'm I'm excited. I feel like every next thing on AuthorTube has been an evolution in the right direction and has been so fun so. I've never worked with Glow in the Dark Yarn before. It is the feel of it's really interesting. The only other downside is it is slightly smaller, but they're not going on the same one, so it's okay. It's just the ear, so it'll be a little bit smaller. I made these Mickey ears, and I wanted to make some for my mom and my friend who are going to Disney with me. Um, and I have, of course, have managed to procrastinate it, and also always manage to forget how long it actually takes me. The plus side is I can bring all my crochet stuff on the plane, so. I just want to get the ear parts done tonight. And if I do that, it would leave the bow and basically just this extra little bit and uh, crocheting it onto the headband. Um, I've already made all the headbands, so I think I can finish. Honestly, I think I can also finish because I always sleep poorly the night before I travel anywhere, even though we're not leaving until like nine tomorrow so um i think i'm gonna have some real quick food and then it is time to start getting ready for the prep timber stream <sighs> yay also i've had the light on this whole time i do want to see how glowy these are in like normal light or if you have to get up really close so i mean it is glowing not as much as a camera but you can't see it cute okay success. I bet if I put it directly in the light it'll be even more so. Let's see. Hell yeah it is. Fun! Okay so worst case we can just use like a flashlight on it. <laughs> Someone asked what motivates you to finish your story and I always sound a bit like a broken record but I do genuinely believe that a skill- whoop, hello branch that a skill unlocks once you complete your first story and from there it's just addicting you want to keep finishing stories also because you can't really know what's missing until you finish a story or you finish a draft Zelda, what are you doing <laughs> huh 
Hi. <laughs> Buffy's getting to be an old girl. Do you guys wanna come inside? <laughs> also because I was just crocheting, I feel the same way about crocheting. I have a lot of like partially finished whips for those on the Twitch stream debating if you say WIPs or whips out loud, but at a certain point you just have to finish things. This is one of the first projects I started because I wanted to make a blanket as everyone does. So because it was one of my first ones, I totally picked the wrong yarn for the project, but I kept like incrementally adding to it and adding to it until finally I was just like, you get this crazed push where you're like, I must finish. I simply must finish this. I carried it around for months, just like in my project pile or yarn pile until finally I was like, I can do this. I can do this no longer. So now it's a functional blanket. It's smaller than I thought it would be. It is heavier than I thought it would be, but it is done and it can be used. And I feel that's true for all parts of the drafting process, including revisions. There's just this place where I am right now where it's just this crazed push. Like, I want to be done. I want to see it in its wholeness, in its entirety of this draft. So I need to finish. I need to finish. Let me know how you guys are doing. going to pause. We are halfway through. Halfway through our two hour and 12 minute sprint. Hopefully I didn't scare any of you too much. Go ahead, uh, get up, do a little movement break. We're gonna stretch. <laughs> Okay, there are 25 minutes left. I am yay much through my reread of the zero draft of this and I need a bit more of an eye break. So I figured we'd go over another question. Someone asked, if you have multiple ideas, how do you choose which one to write next? Which is such a good question, such a valid question. I ask this of myself often, which one am I gonna choose? And it's very timely, what with the 100 k Q4 challenge. Part of it is that this book has just been percolating in the back of my mind, but there are lots of books on my to be written list that have been in the back of my mind that are slowly added to with each random idea. And I wish there was an easier way. I have so many ideas. I'm never in fear of running out of them. But this was something that I struggled with early on because it's like I I scrambled to get to write each of the ideas so much so that I often didn't finish any of them. Now I go by which idea has sort of cooked for the longest, which one is baked in this brain. Uh, continuing with food because I'm a little bit hungry again. You know, it's the one I have the most ingredients for. It's the one that's ready to go in the oven. Yes. For the 100k challenge, I think I'm also excited because I think my mystery skills have developed slightly more um, as I've just been writing more mysteries and so I feel more confident going into it this time. So yeah, so not only have the ideas, the ingredients grown, but also like my tools are sharper. <laughs> okay. Oof. Done. Before I go on my little nighttime walk, I did want to answer one more question, which asked, what kind of stories are on your writing bucket list? I love this. And I'm now thinking maybe this almost goes back to the story of your heart question, but I still hold so deeply my Scooby-Doo meets Princess Bride story. <laughs> Before I just could, cannot figure out exactly the right format to tell it in. I keep talking about trying a pilot or a screenplay, and I think maybe next year's the year that I actually go for it, that I truly, truly go for it. Just to say I finished it, that I did it. <laughs> maybe then it'll fully like, not get out of my head, because I don't think your characters ever leave your head, your stories ever truly leave you, but just to like, <sighs> there's something about it that I just need to tie up, I think, in my own way for myself, even if it never saw the light of day. As for other writing bucket lists, I think, starting a closet full of cauldrons and continuing it to be a like just a series that keeps going however many little cozy mystery ideas i can come up with that's definitely a a dream and i'm excited already to be like at the 
at the start of that almost. Does it count as a writing bucket list if like you're in the midst of making that happen? I don't know. Um, but I think otherwise just writing a story in every genre that I love. Yeah, that would be really fun. Every genre in every format, you know? Yeah, I, I think that's on my list. Please do let me know what's on your writing bucket list. Please do answer any and all of these questions. It is, it is late now. It is almost 10 p.m. I'm not fully packed yet. I gotta take my crochet, but I'm gonna go on a walk. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this video, on this journey. <laughs> and I will see you all very soon with a new video. Bye.